They say, uh, family prays together, they stick together. Amen? Amen. I think they say something about the husband and wife as well. So continue to pray. And it's a, what a privilege that we have uh, that God has given us for us to call that we can worship Him. That through worship that God has made a way for us to be right with God. You know, it's like in any relationship that sometimes it can become a little, um, you know, estranged or a little apart. But God is always calling us. And from the beginning that we were separated from God because of our sin. But it wasn't God. It wasn't us who searched for God. We was God actually took the initiative to came to send prophets and send his Jesus Christ, send his Jesus Christ to be right with him in the ways that he has come and he has died for our sins so that we can be right with him. And it's not just a once once in a lifetime deal, but it's a continual thing. As we come to him, you know, we ask for forgiveness and God makes a way for us to be right with him again and again. So it's a very wonderful opportunity in our prayer time, in our Sunday, in our house church meetings or whatever gatherings that we have, God is continuously calling us to be right with him, to be in that lo- right, loving relationship with him again and again. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for God has given us all these gatherings that we have. Well, last week, we looked at uh, Paul's discipling this church in Philippi about Uriah and Suntuhe about disagreement they had. And so Paul is um, discipling them to be uh, agree in the Lord and also how uh, we, we need to make peace. So this week, we're going to uh, look at just verse 4. You know, I was going to do verse 4 and 5, and I uh, got to cut one down, so, you know, I don't want to, I tried to get it done earlier, so earlier, so, so last week, I got done really early doing our Korean service, and uh, I, 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 I kind of apologized to them. I'm sorry that, you know, because our pianist didn't come back by the time, because usually I go really long, and, and, and I told them, oh, sorry, I went too early. And uh, some of the ladies said, oh, don't be sorry. That was the best sermon. You know, usually uh, the, uh, the <laughs> uh, people like short sermons. So, you know, and, and I'm, not, I'm not that bright in some sense. You know, like when I listen to Tim Keller, he can say nice things in 30 minutes. It takes me about an hour to uh, say whatever he said in 30 minutes. So, so bear with me. Right. And just one of my favorite verses in the Bible, bear with one another. Right. So Amen. please do that. So, so verse 4, uh, first, uh, first of Peter, chapter 4, verse 4, is very simple. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Right? And next verse, I'm going to talk about it in, in next week. You know, and I think sometimes when you look at this kind of verses, it seems impossible for us to really obey this verse. Right? Because he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Right? Emphasizing that always, always means always, right? In every circumstances, at all times. And sometimes when I'm wondering, like, oh, when I sleep, do I rejoice? You know, and so my wife takes a picture of me when I sleep, but then I have this frowning face when I sleep, you know, so I don't think I'm rejoicing when I sleep. <laughs> you know, uh, either I'm dreaming or uh, what something's going on in there, I'm stressed out, and I used to grind my teeth a lot too, but. I, I, I kind of stopped that now, huh? So thank you guys, you know, so maybe uh, <laughs> praise the Lord, you guys been praying for me and uh, maybe I am rejoicing uh, more when I'm sleeping as well. So when I, when I think about Philippians, so they were, they were probably struggling with this issue as well. But that's all, all of us struggle. Like, do I rejoice always in the Lord? Right? In, in every circumstances, right? And I think Joylessness was one of the issues that Paul recognized in this church in Philippi. And Paul is writing to them from jail, right? From jail, who, who, who may be the most joyful person in Rome, right? Even in jail, regardless of whatever was going on. And he's encouraging the people outside of the jail to rejoice. Isn't that oxymoron or what? Right? Paul, who is in jail? Who is not jailed because he did something bad. Right? Because he was in chain for Christ, because he was preaching the gospel, they put him jail, in, in, in jail, but he was encouraging the people outside of the jail who had all kinds of freedom 
for them to rejoice. It's not just the Philippians, but when you read many, many, many Psalms of the David, we knew, we know that he had many hard times, experienced dryness, despair, and discouragement, and we find those Psalms as well. Let me just read one, Psalm 13. It says, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I store up anxious concern within me, agony in my mind every day? How long will my enemy dominate me? Consider me, answer, Lord my God, restore brightness to my eyes, otherwise I will sleep in death. Wow, that's, a, that's despair, that's discouragement. And I heard uh, one of the weapons that devil uses the most is the discouragement. Right? We get discouraged in trying to run the race. Things are not going according to what I think the way it should go. And we get discouraged. Like David, like Philippian church members, we too experience joylessness. And this verse is very relevant to us and is a very good reminder for us. Amen? Yeah. And what, what robs your joy? And think about your life. What steals my joy? Usually are negative circumstances. Right? Right? Negative circumstances robs our joy. The negative things that happens in our lives. Anxiousness. Right? Maybe some doubts that we may have. Right? Maybe our loved one passing away or they're, they're ill. Right? Or even work. Too much work. Or too little work. You know, people who work too much, they say, oh, I wish work, I can work less. And people who don't have any work, they say, I wish I can work some more. You know, where's the happy medium here, right? right? And sometimes our circumstances like that, you don't know which is good and which is bad. And maybe illnesses, difficulty in relationships, in, 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 in our personal relationship or even with our relationship with God, it robs our joy. Right? And, 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 and what is the solution? And the Bible says right there, Paul tells us, rejoice in the Lord. That is the solution that the Bible gives us. And, and, and what is the difference between rejoicing in the Lord and rejoicing because some good things are happening? Yeah. Right? right? And I think when we rejoice in the Lord, joy comes because of our connection with God, our relationship with God. Right? Our, our secure relationship with God in Jesus Christ. But when our, our, our rejoicing comes from our circumstances, it comes from when something good happens. And that's why some theologian says happiness versus joy. And I don't like to use that kind of differentiated because happiness depends on happenings. You know? And you know, in, 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 in some our internal relationship with God, that's not happening too. Right? I, we have a happening in that God loves me. That's a happening. And that happening gives us joy as well. So, you know, but it's okay, right? Happening or joy or, you know, even in Spanish, makarias, that's the same thing as a, you know, blessing or even in Greek, right? Like makarina, right? Where we sing that song, right? A lot, right? So in that joyfulness or happiness, a lot of times it's not based on, right? The, 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 the joy that Paul's talking about, it's not about that, that, that through our circumstances, we find rejoicing, but it's, it's our relationship with God. The, the way God views us, the way God has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, for, for us to be delivered from hell unto heaven. Because of that, we can, right, we can experience this eternal joy. One, one of the interesting things that I find out about myself when I, when I fast, Right? And when you fast, you just drink water and don't drink, don't eat anything else. And, and, and sometimes I wonder, like, because I'm hungry, and when you're hungry, sometimes I can't even fall asleep because you're so hungry. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and when you get tired and hungry, oh man, that's a, that's a bad combination for guys, you know? Right? And, and, and when I'm fasting, and yes, I'm praying, I'm reading the Bible a lot and things, then I realize, hey, did my joy come from because my stomach was full? Or is it because I had a loving relationship with God? You know what I'm saying? Right? And so if I, if, if I had my joy because of my loving relationship with God, it didn't matter. It doesn't matter if my stomach is full or not. 
right? But when my stomach is not full, why is it that I'm not that joyful? Where, 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 where is my relationship with God, and God gone? Did it go anywhere? It should be eternal. You should be, you know, right? Or you should be growing at least. But, but why is my happiness or my joy depends on how my stomach is full or not? Or something good things happening or not? Right? And so this, we've got to discern what is the big bean in, my, in our lives. B-E-A-N. Big bean. Well, big deals in our lives versus the, the small deals of our lives. All these circumstances, these are small deals. But in our dealing with God, it is a big deal. Because our eternity depends on how we do with Christ. What kind of relationship that you have with Christ. It is a big deal for us. Right? It, our destiny gets to be changed how we have our relationship with Christ. I was, I was sharing this with my son yesterday, and I was telling about big bean and small bean, and he goes, Appa, make sure you say the bean right. He thought I was saying B-E-I-N-G, big bean and small bean. And I was saying, no, I'm, I'm really talking about bean. Kongi, right? That's, that's our name for uh, Grace's baby. You know, or they have, we have a name in the baby. And I think, you know, you know, big bean and a small bean. We have to discern what is the big bean of our lives and what are the small beans of our lives. <laughs> big bean is your relationship with God. How much you understand Christ loves you. And the small beans is all these circumstances. Right? Because Jesus even told us how we are faithful to all these little things, right? All the things that God has entrusted us is the little things. Right? And so then God will, right, depends on how we do well with the little things, and He will entrust us with the big thing as well. Right? And I think example of rejoicing in the Lord is shown in Acts 16 through Paul's life. And it was funny because Paul was actually in Philippi, yeah. planting his very church, right? And most people in Philippi, I probably knew what Paul's talking about, rejoicing in the Lord. Because if I, I don't know if you remember in Acts chapter 16, right, it gets Lydia saved, right? And this, there was this demon-possessed girl that who was able to tell the future. And, and she was a slave. So her master made a lot of money, right, from telling people about their fortune, uh, you know, about their future because she had this gift. And they were following Paul and Silas around, and I don't know, maybe a few days, and, and Paul maybe got annoyed, and Paul healed her <laughs> from this demon possession, right? And the owner of the slave, well, this woman, right, and, and realized, oh my goodness, my hope of making money from this, this, this person is all gone, so got Paul and Silas in trouble, right? And so they were put in prison, and they were flogged. You know what flogged means, right? You see Passion of Christ? Right? They have this rope with like fish bones or some little metal things. So when you actually flog people, your flesh comes out. We're talking about that kind of pain thing. They were flogged. Right? And they were in jail. And around midnight, do you know what they did? Yeah? They start singing hymnal. They had a like concert, Christian concert in the prison. They started the Christian ministry in prison. Right? And all these other people are amazed. Like, what are these guys? Who are these guys? Even though they were flogged, even though they were in prison, why are they singing at midnight? I need my sleep. You know, I don't know what they're saying there, but you know, well, you know what I'm saying? They were in jail, right? Injustly, and they were praising God. Right? And after that, what happened? Like, you know, somehow angels showed up, and, you know, the, the, they got, their all shackles were freed, and they were running out, in a way, and the jailer wanted to commit suicide, and Paul says, oh, hey, stop. Well, we're all here, right? Because, you know, you know he's going to get killed anyway because he didn't do his job right. And so Paul is saying, no, I'm, we're, we're all here. So what happened? The jailer and his whole household yeah. got saved. Yeah. Through his rejoicing. Through him, right, acknowledging and really, really connecting with this big being, understanding that his relationship with God is not changing. He loves God. God loves him. And knowing that and expressing that knowledge through him praying, through him praising God, right, brought forth much fruit in Paul's life. 
You know, I'm sure we'll get a little bit of joy when we get what we desire. You know, I desire this, I get that, right? When you get it, you, you experience joy here and there. But what Paul is talking about here and, and is way beyond of getting joy from our temporal circumstances. Right? It's getting from our eternal perspective, eternal relationship that we have with God. Right? And let's not talk temporal, but eternal circumstances. And that's what Paul is telling us. Don't just think about the small beings, but think about the big being. Yes, we are sinners in deserving of eternal separation from God. But because of God's mercy and God's grace, God has given us his great salvation for us, which is the big being. And when we focus on that big being, that we can rejoice in the Lord always. And that's what Paul is telling us. The Bible tells us the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Paul, he had this mindset again and again. Yes, many things can go wrong. Yes, many things can go right. But in his mind, my goodness, right? I was eternally separated from God, but due to his grace and his mercy, God has brought me close to him. God came and God saved me. And because of the great salvation Paul experienced, that he was able to rejoice in the Lord always. And that's what Paul is teaching us. The real joy right, can be experienced when we know and believe what we truly deserve. What we truly deserve. What our lives deserve, which is eternal separation, God's wrath, and God's judgment. Right? But what we actually received through Jesus Christ is that his grace and his mercy and his love and his great salvation. That's why we can rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah. This eternal truth yeah, was there from the beginning and will be there forever right, because Jesus Christ finished his work. Right? And versus temporal life that we have, 70, 80, 8, 90 years of this earthly life, the small beings happen. I'm not saying they're not important, but you know, it's not as important. It's way less important than this big being of our relationship with God. And how grateful of we can become. Because we know what we truly deserved. But how God has given us His great salvation. In Christ Jesus, we have eternal life regardless we have bad day or we have a good day, right? Our eternal destination does not change, right? We're going to be with God for in heaven forever and ever. When we get this perspective, when we understand this, when we truly live in this truth, we know what the big being is. You know this, what the you know, small beings in our lives, right? It doesn't really matter that much. Right? compared to what we get to do in eternity. Right? So the difference between the big being and small being is the big being is the main thing, and the small being is the non-main thing. And somebody said the main thing in life is the keeping the main thing as the main thing. Right? And how many times how these small things they can become main thing, then we get all messed up in our lives. Right? And our perspective changes, our mood changes, our understanding changes, our knowledge changes, and in the ways that we live out from that messed upness, it won't be very beautiful, it won't be very nice, because our perspective is, is incorrect. Yeah. Knowing what we deserve and knowing what we receive in Jesus Christ, yeah, we can become the happiest person regardless of our circumstances. Do you believe that? Yeah. Knowing what we deserve before Christ, and after receiving the, the gift of salvation that God has given us, we can become the happiest person. Not comparison to others, happiest person that you can become regardless of any circumstances. I want to show you a little video. It's from The Despicable Me too, right? And this movie, right? You guys like it, I can tell, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this movie, in the, the first part, right? How his life gets changed because of this, the, the three girls' life, how they really loved upon him, right? Because this love relationship, you know, this, this person grew, the villain who stole the moon, right? Or he does that crazy things, right? And he's the villain, he's the bad guy, but somehow he experiences life transformation because of love, 
as a part one and part two, right? And he finds this special relationship with Lucy. He gives him, you know, some, and then even notice the music that how it comes out. It's a very short, right? So watch this video. Yes, surprisingly, it was. Oh, and uh, just between you and me, you look much better bald. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Because you know this person loves you, and you feel great, right? See, <laughs> no. oh, sorry. Like, did you see the the shape of the pancake or whatever he was making? It was a heart shape. I don't know how he did that, right? But it's amazing because of his loving relationship with this Lucy. It changed everything about him, about his outlooks, about even the kind of days he had. I had a horrible day, but I'm still joy rejoicing. <laughs> I'm still in jail. I got all these bruises and my flesh is all torn out, but I can still praise God because I have this big pain in my life. Yeah. Has God, has God's salvation brought joy into your life? Is it real in your lives? Has the gospel of Jesus Christ impacted you so hard that in all the good days, all the bad days, and all the days in between, are those are small beings in our lives. Has the love of God in Jesus Christ, which can, nothing can separate us, brought joy into your life? That is the key. That is the question that Paul is asking right here. Right? Right? Has gospel of Jesus Christ brought joy into your life? Is there any happy song? Yeah. Is there a happy song in your life that you're singing each day because of what Christ Jesus has done in your life? Right? Not giving what you deserve but how God has given you eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The gift of God that God has given us. Yeah. Even David writes in Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined me to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Yeah. And David realized how God has delivered him, right? From pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set David's feet upon a rock so that he can make his strides in walking this life. God's salvation brought joy to David. And the question is that God's salvation right, has brought joy into my life, in our lives. Yeah. And why is it so many Christians look like that we got baptized in lemon juice? Why is that? You know, right? whatever that feels in your heart, when we get bumped to it, it's going to come out. When God fills our, with our hearts with His great salvation, when somebody bumps you, what's supposed to come out is joy. Come out, it should be graceful. And that's what the next verse is all about. Show graciousness to other people. And they're all kind of related in the Lord. Right? Going back to our main text, did you notice the word always? And remember, this rejoicing is not a suggestion. Right? It's a command. It's imperative. It's that you must rejoice in the Lord always. Always means always. In all circumstances. At all times. I'm sure we have some dull moments, right? Sad moments, grievous moments. But even in those moments, we can echo with Paul and how he said in 2 Corinthians 6.10, he says, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Mm -hmm. Some other version says, as grieving, yet always rejoicing. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? And it's not ignoring those sad moments. Even though you're super sad inside, like you're just putting a fake you know, smile and stuff like that. It's not like that at all. Right? I'm not talking about you can ignore those sad moments, but always thinking about the great salvation God has gifted us. God has granted us. 
through the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ, how He has brought us out of this pit of destruction to set my feet upon a rock of Jesus Christ, making my steps secure and possible, putting a new song in our mouth, in our hearts, a song of praise to our God, so that we can think about the salvation. We can think about the big thing. Right? And, and, you know, several few weeks ago, several weeks ago, I, I saw Hamilton and Elizabeth. And I know some of you guys know what's going on with their baby in the womb. And they need, he needs uh, two surgeries as baby comes out of the, uh, to the world. But one thing I noticed about them is that, man, they still maintain this joy. Yeah. Yeah. And knowing that I'm going to preach this sermon one of these days, right? Because I was going to Philippians. And I know, man, I've got to talk about that. Because they really maintain the joy. It shows in their face. It shows in their, you know, their lives. In the ways that they do their life. And the way they serve and, and love one another and their community. It's amazing that we got to actually see how this lived out in Hamilton and Elizabeth's life. Yeah. And can you imagine... If all of our lives were like that, regardless how right, difficult, how suffering, right, or how happy moments that, that we go when we are living under, right? but then because of our focus on the big being, our focus on the great salvation that God has granted us through the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ, Right? That, that, that what we deserve was eternal separation, but what God granted us was the great salvation, that we get to be with God forever and ever in heaven. Okay. Would God, right? would we not able to rejoice like Paul rejoiced in prison, in doing mission trips, in difficulties, in sufferings, focusing on his mind on God, accentuating the work of Jesus Christ? I just imagine our community of faith was like that, right? How much more winsome they will be in the world. How the in people in the world will look at us like these crazy Christians are crazy because even though they are walking in the valley of shadow of death, they don't fear evil for they know at least what they say is God is with them. Wouldn't there be a great testimony in our lives to tell the whole world of what kind of great salvation we have received from God, that these small beings in our life, that's not, not important, but this very, very important thing of our lives has overcome all these little happenings in our lives for the glory of God. They're giving us the right perspective, right fuel, right grace, right understanding that God can move us, make us, and mold us to be rejoiceful, be rejoicing always, in the Lord, regardless what kind of circumstances that we go again. That's why Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Right? Again, I say rejoice again and again. How do we do this? Right? I think the application is that we need to memorize one of those verses that talks about what we deserve, but what God gave us or something great. And, and, and that verse for me is uh, in Romans 6.23. I read to you earlier. Right? For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. How we need to memorize this thing, meditate upon that, think about it, mulling it over, right? That's what meditating means, how cow, cow right, regurgitates the food, a cow has like four stomach, then you, um, 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 right? then what cow does? They go, no, mm, no, mm, no, mm, they do that, it's nasty, man. Yeah. And they do that. I don't know how many times they do it. That's what it means to meditate. And the word meditate, medicine is the same thing. Kind of the same root of that. Right? How that can keep us rejoicing always. Remember, memorize these verses for you to be focusing on the big being that God has given us. And I can surely that we can rejoice in the Lord always. Knowing that this is a command that God has given us. And he's telling us how we can rejoice is in the Lord, in all circumstances, in all times, right? I pray for all of us, allow this verse right, to come in our flesh, right? How the word became flesh, how this word can come inside of us, come out of our flesh so that we can surely rejoice in all circumstances for the glory of God to this dying world to show us what life can be 
in Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray together. Would ushers come forward? I want to challenge you this morning to remind yourselves of the gospel, this great salvation, the great life that God has given us in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Bible says very clearly that Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is the eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, what we deserved in our sin was death. But also remember, the free gift of God is eternal life. By God sending His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, that we may be right before God. When God sees us, all of our sins that Christ laid on His shoulders when He died on the cross, if we trust Christ with our lives. So I challenge you this morning. Believe in God. Repent from your sins. Repent from that how we have not been rejoicing. Focusing on too much of the small beings of our lives. Our circumstances. Rather than focusing on this great truth of the gospel what we surely deserve that we didn't get but how Christ got what we deserve to give us who Christ was which is eternal life in Jesus Christ Father we thank you so much for that great truth that frees us from the bondage of sin that we receive so much love and grace and mercy from you that we are filled with your love, then we want to love you the way you have loved us. Father, thank you so much for this challenge and this, this command to rejoice in the Lord always. And we confess that our life is not always joyful. And you teach us that don't focus on so much of those temporary circumstances, but the eternal truth of the gospel that we, what we deserve, that you took from us, which was your judgment. But now you have given us your eternal life. And we thank you so much for that. And as we focus on that big being, surely we'll be able to rejoice in the Lord always, in all circumstances, and in all times. Reign in us with that truth, Father, May that word, your word, come out in our flesh in, showing, in living a joyful life. May the world around us be astounded by the ways that we can live this joyful life. In
you being our Lord and salvation. And Lord, we ask that you will keep our eyes above the storm and we will only see you and you alone and your promises because that's truth. And Lord, we want to live in that truth and in that reality. And so Jesus, help us to see your glory and the big things instead of the petty things and the little things that are very temporary, like the pastor said. And so, Lord, um, and only by your grace can we do that and can we live in that truth. So, Jesus, may you empower us today and tomorrow and the days to come and help us to teach that to our children, to share that with our friends and co-workers and for them to find that uh, reality as their truth as well. So, Jesus, we thank you for today and help us to be still and know that you are God and that you are reigning with your power and that, Lord, we just wait in quietness and in trust. So we thank you for today in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful Sunday, everyone.